Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another New World video. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different from the guides that we've been doing and lean more towards decision making and thought process inside of PvP. Now this is just going to be my two cents of my gameplay on a few common things that I'm thinking about while I'm playing. This isn't going to be a video where I'm going to be covering talents, stats, or anything like that. Again, I just want the main focus of this video to be my thought process during fights. Now, I'm not claiming to be the best New World PvPer out there, but hopefully you can find some stuff that I'll be talking about during this video helpful. Alright guys, so jumping into it, I just want to say that there will be some pausing and playing, just because I want to be able to cover everything that's on my mind, and some of the fights go a little bit quicker than others. Alright, so before we jump into this first clip, I kind of want to set up the scene so you guys know what's going on. I was out questing, and I had two guys show up. I didn't know how many there were. I saw two. I was thinking there could be more. One of them started shooting a fire staff at me. I immediately realized I'm not recording. So I started running, got my OBS up, and that's where this video takes off from. So as you can see, I'm using that rapier mobility, I'm just trying to get away, create distance. I'm holding alt, I turn around and I see that they're still chasing. Now something that I like to do with range is I don't always like to hold alt and turn around and watch where they're going to be just because I feel like I can dodge better and have a little bit better movement if I'm not looking behind me. So something I'll typically do with range is I'll just turn around and try to shoot out an evade shot. So that's what I do here. I land and I kind of see where they are in positioning. So I'm going to load a penetrating shot here and I actually get a nice headshot. Now, if we rewind this, so the first thing that goes through my head when I hit this is I see that damage and I see his life absolutely get chunked. Now this kind of signals one thing inside of my mind. I really need to figure out how many of them there are. You can see there's kind of just a cluster of everything from mobs behind them. There's some unflagged people but I really want to take this fight. I know from the amount of damage that I just did to this guy, he's in light gear. So as long as I set myself up correctly and I hit my shots, I don't choke, I can definitely kill this guy. So this is a fight I really want to take. It's just about getting myself in that right positioning and in the right moments. Because again, as of right now, I don't know how many I'm hitting. So I hit that shot and I turn around, try to get another shot in with my poison shot. Unfortunately, it missed. I set my camp spawn there. I'm still using that rapier mobility and I turn around here. Now, the reason I immediately turn is because one, my camp is right there, but I also want to now see how many of them there are. And you can really see, I start to figure it out. There's two of them. These are all ads. There is an unflagged guy. So I'm not too worried. So I immediately notice as I'm shooting this guy, that guy started putting up a heal because his life went up. So not only am I fighting a fire staff, I'm also fighting a life staff. So I'm still trying to kite it out. Just keep distance because I don't know what the secondary is for this life staff guy. And he's pushing into me. So I'm assuming it's either going to be a melee weapon or maybe something like an ice gauntlet. And he wants to try to CC me. So as you can see though, my focus has now shifted from this guy towards the healer. I know I can definitely kill this guy, but it's going to be more effective for me to try to target the healer and kill him to not have to worry about setting up all of my damage and dumping it into this guy. And then the healer, of course, being completely free and just tops him because he goes in a safe spot. So I turn and I hit my penetrating shot there on him. And now I'm just keeping distance between the healer and myself. I'm just kiting down the mountain. So right here, I'm going to throw up another evade shot just to kind of get a look of where they are. I don't want to hold alt. So now I see an ice gauntlet. I use that evade, bump out of there, and I'm just trying to kite out and create distance. So at this moment, while I'm kiting down, I'm kind of trying to think of the scenarios that I need to put myself in to win this. And there's really two things that are coming into my mind. Number one, I need to soften up one of the targets, preferably the healer, to the point where he commits to chasing rather than topping himself. That way he'll be low enough. So in an ideal world, I kind of hit this combo of all of my abilities, maybe some extra shots, and I'll have enough damage to just surprise him and kill him. Or number two, I'm looking at my positioning and I need better positioning. Right now I'm looking at this and I see that, you know, this is a very narrow terrain to be fighting on. I'm going downhill, they have the high ground, and I really have no cover. So what I'm thinking is if I can get to one of these trees, or maybe even over here, I'll have a much bigger area to be going in and out, possibly creating LOS or line of sight between me and one of the targets, and being able to isolate one of them to kind of have that 1v1 and set up my damage. So as we continue, I'm just going side to side. I'm not just going in a straight line to be an easy target for them to hit. So as I turn around, I see the fire staff 
my main focus again is the healer. So I'm going to look to him. Boom, I hit my shot. I try to hit the evade shot on the fire staff just to help create some CC for me. And because I got hit there, I'm going to pop a food buff right here on my number six. And I'm going to use some LOS just to drop down and kind of have this field as my playground. So I get down, my food buff is running, as you can see right here. And this ice storm comes down on me. Now, I'm trying to kite away from them as well, but there's going to be times where instead of rushing through or even going back, you want to take the shortest and safest route as possible to get out of certain area of effects. So for me, going straight south is going to be the best option just to get out of this. So I get out of that as fast as I can with the roll and I'm turning around my bow. Now I know I just hit the penetrating shot on the healer up on this ledge. So immediately what my thought process is, is if I can turn around, he's probably not topped himself, he's probably not popped a potion, and he's probably not popped a food buff. He's a healer, he's going to be relying on his heals to heal him, which is a big mistake by most healers. You still want to be utilizing all of those things, especially when you're chasing. I'm kind of making a guess right now that they're hungry for this kill, so he hasn't done any of those things, and he's just pursuing me. So I'm turning around and I'm going to be trying to hit this evade shot right here. Because I know if I can hit that, he's softened up, I can set up a kill. So I turn around, I hit the evade shot directly into a poison shot, into a penetrating shot. The poison ticks, I kill him and I get the finish. I want to go back and kind of break that down really quickly. Because there's one very important thing that I want to point out. Now in one of my previous videos that I did, I was talking about the bow. And how I personally like to use penetrating shot to set up my poison shot for direct hits. Now in this situation though... I'm a huge fan, again, of range, being able to just turn around and hit that evade shot kind of as a no looker. It does take a little bit of practice, but once you start doing it and you get used to it, I promise you it's very rewarding. So I hit my penetrating shot and he gets staggered for a second. This gives me enough time to load up my poison shot. Now I'm going for that direct hit on poison shot. If I did not get that direct hit, that 700 damage, he would not have died as fast as he did. I could have shot that poison arrow right here to split the difference between the two of them and possibly poison both of them, but that's not my focus. I need to put all of my damage specifically at one target to kill him. Now, the reason that I didn't do my penetrating shot first is because when we're talking about maximizing DPS, I want that poison to be ticking for as long as possible, which means I need to get it out before the penetrating shot. So as you can see, I already have one tick of the poison I'll load up my penetrating, and the poison tick is actually what kills him. I take another basic shot, I get the finish, and now I'm on to the 1v1. Now, I'm not going to lie here. I do play on a low camera sensitivity, and I didn't swing my mouse fast enough. I was kind of hyped that I just picked him off. I'm feeling pretty good about this 1v1 that I'm now going to have. So I pull out the rapier. He's right in melee range, but unfortunately, I don't swing my camera fast enough. I start left-click mouse spamming, and I choke, but it's all right. So now I'm just going to be swapping back to my bow and I actually notice that he's actually running away. Why is that? Well, he had a 2v1 and now it's a 1v1, so he's probably a little bit scared. So unfortunately, I missed my penetrating shot there, but I'm going to pursue this guy because I feel confident. I know that he's scared, but I still want to keep my distance. I'm not running straight up to him. If you go back to this and look at exactly what I did, where did I go? I didn't just run straight at him with the rapier. I went and I'm trying to utilize some of these trees in between. I'm rolling just so I can actually get some damage. I got one hit there. I'm missing a couple of shots, but that's okay. This is unfortunate. I actually get stuck right there with my flesh on top of a rock. If we go back and look at this really quickly. I kind of went nowhere, but it's all right. If I had gotten the space, I think I'd have been just a little bit closer that he would have actually been in melee range to use this rapier. But he hits the ice storm, so I try to get out of it as fast as I can. I see the ice shower, so I'm committing. You know what? I'm done with the rapier. I just need to go to the bow. I'm having more success with it than melee, so I'm just swapping back to this. So pulling it back, I try to get that evade shot. I miss. I immediately go into the penetrating shot, and I hit that. Now playing that back, you know, I'm not quite sure if that was actually a headshot or whether it was a body shot that I hit and it just happened to crit with penetrating shot, but he gets absolutely chunked. So it's a little difficult to see, but I'm shooting through the poison here and I realize, oh, he's an ice block. That's all right. I'm going to pop another food buff, make sure I'm getting my heals up and I'm going to load a heavy shot. Boom. I get the kill. Now, that is one thing that I would suggest if you're actually playing ice gauntlet, as soon as you exit your ice block, you need to be using your roll 
to avoid this situation happening right here. He stood still, gave me a free headshot, and I just killed him. But I'm not complaining because I set myself up for a nice 1v2. I executed my game plan. And personally, I think this is a lot better and much cleaner than the other 1v2 that I have up with the bow spear. Just because, again, I've been playing a lot more. So my aim is obviously going to be improving along with my game sense. All right, guys. So that's it for all the clips that we're going to cover today. But I kind of wanted to have a little bit of a discussion on something that I mentioned in my last video. So my last video that I did, if you're unaware, was an ultimate rapier build slash guide. So if you haven't seen that, I'll have it linked at the end of the video that you can go check it out. But at the end, I mentioned that, you know, I felt world PvP was dying. It was getting harder and harder for me to find it. But I kind of want to focus in on what I meant by that. So as you can see in the footage in the back, I find people that are flagged all the time. They're mostly doing crap like running portals. But the problem there is, you know, it's me versus 20 people. So I'm going to laugh about it and be cheap and just, you know, stay in the back with a musket and just pick people off for free weapon XP. But there's really no way for me to just run in there solo and, you know, take out as many as I can. Maybe if I get lucky and I have, you know, the one straggler who sees me actually fighting and runs out and doesn't tell the group and I can take a 1v1 but so far that has basically never happened so while this runs in the background i kind of want to give my two cents on the the topic you know i feel like there's no real incentive to have pvp on at end game you know when the game first dropped and my server had a queue of like 3500 people world pvp was everywhere like i i mean it was great a lot of the footage that i have is you know footage that I don't consider to be great, but I felt like I was getting in a lot of fights, which helped me practice and become better at PVP, having that break between beta and the game actually dropping. Leveling up with PVP on, I'm pretty sure you get like a 10% experience boost. So you have some incentive to actually turn it on, especially if you're going for max level as fast as you can. Versus now when we're at level 60, you know, there's really not anything to have it on for. The only thing that I can say, you know, having PVP on provides you is, you have the ability to go capture a fort and you get the fort benefits for your faction while you're inside that territory. But then, of course, you know, depending where you go, you're just going to have a plague of that color, whoever owns the territory, just come in and basically demolish you. Which, you know, I have no problem being outnumbered, you know, depending on the day, what setup I'm running, how I feel with my aim. I'm more than comfortable to do, you know, 1v1s, 1v2s, even 1v3s, depending on the terrain and, you know, the skill of the people, possibly a 1v4, you know, maybe, that, that, but that's kind of stretching it. A 1v5, I would kind of count as death. I, I know my limits. But if I got a buddy with me, I'll, I'll take a 2v5 all day. But I'm finding it very hard to find those 1v1s and the 1v2s. It's always just people who have on PvP. They're usually just running in these mass groups of people. But if I really want PvP, you know, I'll try to get someone to go with me. Most of the time, I know I'm going to be outnumbered, but I should be able to get in a couple of fights. I feel comfortable that it's at least winnable until, you know, a C of that faction shows up and you're just completely outnumbered. You know, you're, it's something like 2 to 11. And it's just, at that point, it's just you got to run away. I play on the East Coast and, you know, I've, I've talked to a couple of friends that play out on the West Coast. And, you know, they, they've said to me, you know, their server is still pretty solid for PvP. So I want to know what you guys personally think. How's your server holding up? Are you finding those small PvP engagements? You know, those 1v1s, you know, the, the 2v2s, maybe the 3v3s. Or is it just a complete zerg for you guys where it's either just a mass of 20 people versus four or like 30 people rolling deep versus another huge group of people? You know, also, where are you finding the PvP? I've been going to the dense populated areas and going to those forts, but I've also been going to the end game zones looking for PvP out there. But let me know what you guys think, you know. That's about it for me for this video. Guys, I again... You know, I can't thank you enough for all the support that you've been giving the channel. Hopefully you found something useful out of this video, maybe some tips, some positioning, maybe some strategy that you want to implement into your gameplay. I want to count this as episode one because I feel like each fight is so unique that, you know, some fights will have their similarities, but then they'll also have their differences, whether it be terrain, the thing you're fighting against, or even the setup that you're using. So if you did like this kind of video, do me a huge favor and let me know by dropping a like on it so I know... I I need to be making more of these. If you enjoyed this kind of content and you want to find your way back, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss another upload. But guys, again, that's it for me. Thank you so much. Just remember, the meta. I'll catch you in the next one.